let's just focus here on Russian debt payments. Timothy Ash joins us, Emerging Markets Senior Sovereign Strategist at Blue Bay Asset Management. And Timothy, we're, we're talking here about the Office of Foreign Asset Control in the United States and whether it is willing to wave through these Russian debt payments. It, it appears on the face of it at the moment from what we know that they are. And yet they do have the power to push Russia into default effectively. Why are they not doing it? Well, we've had a bit of a game of chicken between OFAC and the Russian Ministry of Finance in recent months, each figuring out whether a Russian default is more painful for the other. Uh, the Russians were kind of pretending that they weren't going to pay or they were going to pay in rubles. In the end, they blinked and they paid in dollars and they paid from their their unfrozen uh, FX assets. And OFAC, I think, made the decision that actually allowing the Russians to draw down their, their uh, reserves beyond their re OFAC's reach was, was, a benefit, was beneficial to, uh, to the West and in the campaign uh, to help Ukraine uh, against the, the, you know, obviously the war being waged by Russia. So what is it that the market is most focused on at this stage? Because obviously we spent a lot of the program this morning talking about Ursula von der Leyen's big announcement around the oil embargo over the next six months or so. And yet as we've watched the ruble, um, it does seem to have bounced back a little or at least firmed around perhaps speculation that the payment will be made here. So for you, as you focus on this country and the financials, what matters most? Well, the ruble's not really a market. It's very, guys like us, very hard to trade. Uh, it's very managed and controlled. It, it's not really a real reflection of, of, of where the, the currency should be. So I wouldn't particularly focus on the ruble. Um, I mean, I guess the market, like everyone, is, is focusing on where this conflict's going uh, will there be escalation beyond Ukraine? Uh, will NATO get dragged in? Uh, and what are the implications for, for global markets and particularly energy markets? Uh, and, and at the moment, you know, we, we just don't know, right? I mean, everything's dependent on, on Putin and what his decision set's uh, going to be. But, uh, I, you know, unfortunately, it does seem as though we're still in an escalatory mode, and that's very worrying for Europe and, and I guess, that, well, surely for the global economy as well. Timothy, it's very hard, good morning to you, by the way, to look at this uh, from anything other than a Western lens. If you look at it from that lens, then, of course, it seems quite draconian what we're seeing on sanctions from the US, uh, from Europe and other allies as well. But there are an awful lot of very big nations out there that aren't playing ball with what the West is doing. The Indians, for instance, the Chinese as well. Uh, how watertight do you think are those sanctions? And actually, will Russia find other markets and alleviate some of the worst economic concerns? Actually, I'd say the opposite. I mean, I think it's striking that the Chinese are not particularly helping the Russians out. Russian energy is uh, trading at a, a sharp discount. Russia's finding it hard to, to ship oil because of uh, sanctions around insurance. Um, so actually, I'd say the opposite, actually. I mean, uh, I think the, the sanctions unity in the West has been pretty remarkable. I mean, uh, you know, I don't think anyone expected uh, way back on February 24th, that there would be uh, unity in the in the West on uh, you know an oil embargo in effect at the end of the year. I mean that's quite striking, right? I mean, so um, you know, in the end, over the longer term, Russia will be cut out of of Western energy markets. Uh, it's difficult for it to, to sell a lot of this energy elsewhere. Gas there aren't gas pipelines east, uh, and, and this is going to be a devastating blow long term on the Russian economy, is my view.